Okay, so welcome to this webinar uh, for being a film, media and uh, screenwriting student. Um, we have two of our ambassadors here who are going to share their experiences on being in those departments. We've got Hannah with us and we've got Oliver with us who are going to share some of the things that they've done on their journey to starting university, which will hopefully give um, people listening, people watching um, a bit of food for thought and also hopefully alleviate some of those worries, some of those concerns that um, might arise as you uh, journey towards starting university and hopefully with us in September. So first things first, we're going to come to kind of the, the, the start of that journey is obviously about research and about researching universities. Hopefully at this point you are starting to receive your offers. Uh, you're starting to, to make those decisions on where you want to see uh, yourself as your, your firm or your insurance choices. Um, but Hannah, I'll come to you first. So what steps did you take before you before you joined university? I sort of looked at quite a lot. I had about seven universities that I looked at before sort of making my choice and I was mainly going for the ones that I thought would either help me or would probably be the most fun and educational and I'd have a lot of enjoyment doing because I didn't want to do a course that I wouldn't enjoy and I'd maybe want to leave university if it wasn't as fun as I thought it'd be so I sort of did all that and I did a lot of research into a lot of different universities the courses that they did obviously how far away they were as well brilliant, brilliant. Um, Oliver, um, Oliver, you, what steps did you take before joining university well what I did mostly was just get advice from my lecturers and teachers when I was at college so I'd approach them and kind of ask if they thought it was the right direction for me and I'd consult them about my choices of course. So I'd always try and keep them in the loop to make sure they knew how my progress was getting on. Excellent. That links in nicely to um, some of the stuff we'll talk about later about asking questions of lots of different people. So um, sticking with you, Oliver, then how did you first feel about going to university? What were those first thoughts and feelings around it? Uh, it was quite scary to be honest to begin with because it was kind of it felt like it was going to be a big step from college to university, but my teachers did reassure me that it wasn't as big as I thought it would be. And yeah, I, I did get quite excited, to be honest, when it got to around this stage about applying. Excellent, thank you. And Hannah, how about you? What were your feelings around, around starting university? university? Um, I think my biggest one was the fact that I'm very far away from home. So I was kind of the whole getting homesick and like trying to adjust to not being near my family and that but being in like a new environment and meeting all the people that I got to meet on my course and who I was living with sort of made it a lot better. Excellent, Excellent. Well, sorry where is home for you Hannah? <laughs> Essex so it's about three hours away. Okay, okay yeah, yeah that's quite way. <laughs> way. Um, so sticking with you Hannah so what's your top, what's your tip, top when tip when deciding with university? university? Um, definitely don't go for one that your friends are going to. Just because your friends are going to one doesn't mean you have to. Go for one that you think um, will give you the best university experience and will really help your course and your decision on your degree as well. Excellent. Excellent. Oliver, how about you? What would be your top tip when deciding on universities? I'd say look for the place with the best equipment. So wherever you want to study, look for the place where you're going to get the best experience out of the equipment that they have on offer. So you can get the most realistic experience you can in your time at university before you go out to the big, scary, wild world. Excellent, thank you. Yeah, one of the key things as well I know that we talk about in schools is, is doing your research into what the facilities are like, links in nicely to like you say, making sure that you've got the kit, the equipment and the accessibility to it as well, that that, that actually what's on offer you can get um, in a relatively good time and bits and pieces like that. So um, leads us on to just a few of the things that we would say for top tips coming off of that. So what I would say is um, you should be inviting to uh, be invited to things like visit days. You might still have some open days going on um, and campus tours are always going on, especially at the University of Chichester. So do take opportunities like that to come and visit us, to come and visit the campus um, and where we can, we will also arrange for kind of additional bits alongside and we can look at um, getting students around. We can also wear um, 
where available, get people like our academics as well. If you're thinking about commuting, it may well be that you want to test run your, your university to home journey or journey both ways, just so that when you do start those first weeks, that first couple of days isn't stressful, you've given yourself enough time, it, it will add to that feeling of being a little bit more secure in what you're doing. Um, do visit the local area. So on our applicant open days, we are um, able to offer things like city tours so do get out there do visit the local area you're going to be living there for three years potentially more so make sure that it's an area um, that you like that you see yourself being in that there's activities outside of the academic study all those sorts of things um, and also quite importantly as I think Hannah and Oliver have echoed is ask questions do ask questions of um, friends, family, anyone who's around you that can help, but also people like teachers come to university and ask our academics questions, ask our students questions. They are the ones who are going to give you um, the experience and that authentic answer as well. So getting started, so we're, we're getting towards that that first week um, and, and you're, you're getting towards that scary part of taking your first steps onto campus uh, and also that first week where you'll probably hear it be, being called freshers and bits and pieces like that. So Hannah, I'll come to you first, but what was your what first, was your week, first at university week at university like? like? Um, are we doing like freshers week or actual university week? <laughs> go with, go with, with, go with your, your freshers, freshers week. week. Uh, so Freshers was very fun. Um, the people that I lived in the flat with, we went to pretty much all of the Freshers events. All the events were really lovely. We all sort of, we'd only known each other for like a week before Freshers, so it was very nice to sort of get out as a group and sort of see how everyone sort of settles in when we do events and how we sort of cope living together for a whole year so it was sort of very nice to do all the freshers events at first and then uh my first week of university was kind of very chill uh, i think we had three lessons a week um but our two lecturers were all sort of very nice. They were sort of very welcoming and very chill. And we had sort of very nice lessons and we all sort of got very used to being with each other quite quickly. Excellent. And Oliver, to you. How did you find settling into student life in that first week? I thought it was quite good, especially on the course I'm on. Um, for Freshers Week, you have an induction week, which I think is really good for the film industry. But it's kind of getting you used to all the equipment and in that week we kind of met everyone on our course and we got to know everyone and in that week i met the people who i'd spend the majority of the year with and the majority of this year with so it's kind of you get to know people quite well and you have a good time with them and you go out to things like the freshers fair with them so it's good bonding time and it kind of sets you on the track for the rest of the year Excellent, thank you. Oliver, did you um, did you join any Facebook groups? Did you communicate with other applicants in any other way? Yes, I did. I joined the Facebook group for freshers. Uh, that was good on the build up before coming to university because I kind of you speak with everyone in there, you see who your flatmates could be and then you finally meet them on the day. It's quite exciting build up really. But yeah, it did help in the first week as well with the Facebook group because you could ask people questions because everyone everyone had kind of like the same questions. So it was good to kind of have like a survey of people. Excellent. Hannah, how about you? Did you um, talk on any other, any other platforms? platforms? Uh, yeah, so obviously I was in the Facebook group that Oliver said about. So that was sort of everyone sort of was like, who's on this course? Who's on this course? And then as soon as we found um, my flatmates, uh, we created a Snapchat group. So we always had that to communicate with each other and then I think after a couple of weeks my media class we all have a giant group chat that we sort of message on if people need help with anything and just sort of so that we had each other outside of class as well as sort of inside but yeah I think it was mainly just the Facebook group and then Snapchat sort of just sort of came after we all settled in. 
Excellent. And I think like you say, obviously, it, 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 you but start to build those networks, don't you? And then when you get there, it, it settles you in that a little bit easier. Um, something we'll talk about as we come towards the end is, is, is a new platform for us, but something that we're introducing is, is Campus Connect, which is very similar to the idea of the Facebook group, but it's a platform where you will be able to meet other students, you'll be able to start to chat to students with similar interests, similar courses, um, and also those who might be in the halls that you're going to be in and bits and pieces like that. So we'll talk about that as we come towards the end. Um, so, um, coming to you, Hannah, what does a typical week look like for you? Um, mine sort of changes on the semesters. So this semester, uh, my week is a lot more hectic than last semester and I'm in a lot more days. Um, but they're quite nice weeks. I only have like one lecture per day, which is quite nice compared to other times when I've had double lectures throughout the whole day. Um, and they're sort of a nice length and we always do get a break and it's just sort of nice to sort of have it spread out over a period of days rather than cramming it all into a couple of days. Excellent. Oliver, what about your typical week? What, do you, what does yours currently look like? My current week based off the timetable at the minute is I'm in three days a week for uni, but then the rest of the days quickly become filled up with ex extracurricular things. So especially with um, film courses, you're always helping out on someone else's work, editing someone's work, coming up with ideas for something you've not done yet. It's kind of, you spend all your time, well, it's not all your time, you spend three days of your week in uni, and then you spend bits and pieces around the rest of the week, kind of working on your own ideas and using the freedom the university gives you. Excellent. That's brilliant. Thanks, guys, for sharing that. That's uh, really interesting. So um, one of the things that we're always asked about, um, and, and I'm sure you guys in a minute will, will verify some of those sorts of things, is, is what are your biggest concerns, some of the worries that people have, but quite often they're things that very quickly they realise um, everyone else is feeling. I think like you guys have already said, things like living in halls, things like coping with the workload, uh, looking after money, budgeting, those sorts of things. So what what were some of your biggest concerns when joining, uh, when coming to university? Oliver, do you want to go first? Yeah, sure. Um, one of the biggest things for me was definitely money, managing my own money and kind of realising how far money can really get you. So one of the best ways I think to get to know someone at uni is talk to them about how badly you spend your money because every nearly every student spends their money poorly and it's just something every student kind of learns to get away from as they get into more years and they kind of bash themselves. Hannah how about you? Um, I mean yeah the looking after your own money was definitely sort of hard but obviously finding trying to find a job straight away is definitely the best one to go for but I think living in the halls because you're always fear that um, you won't get along with the people that you live with and it's just going to be very and because you're living together for a year you worry about like tension and drama and what's going to happen so that's definitely one of the big concerns. <laughs> Excellent. And I'm hoping those things were were kind of a, a alleviated for you guys. But um, yeah, in, in terms of what Hannah's just said about jobs as well. So we're very lucky at the University of Chichester. We do have um, kind of local jobs in the area. We have um, seasonal jobs as well. Um, there's quite a lot of tourism in our local area, but we also have jobs through the university. So our students union recruit students to um, work behind the bar in the student shop, all sorts of things like that. Um, and we also recruit students as um, student ambassadors so uh, delivering things like campus tours, supporting our open days and also working with us in our local schools as well. So there's lots of opportunities for part time work. Um, like Hannah said, it's that worry as you get as you're coming towards university. We have students who um, work for companies where they're able to um, switch jobs, uh, uh, switch, sorry, switch locations and move into to local um, jobs that they've they've got in their local area as well. So there's there's lots and lots of different different options. Um, and then in terms of Oliver's point on budgeting, um, one of the things to say as well is we do have our student money team um, and our student money team are, are, are experts at helping you uh, work out a budget but also being able to signpost you to other pots of money that you might be able to access as well should you need additional support. So um, leading on nicely to um, kind of the moving away from home and, and making friends. Um, 
Hannah, I'll come to you first. How did you feel about, you feel about moving home? home? Um, I was definitely a little nervous because uh, I've never been this far away from home. So the homesick was definitely real and I did feel it for like quite a while. Anytime I FaceTimed my parents, I did get very upset because it just felt weird and it was the first time I'd sort of been away from them for long. But after a while, you kind of feel less homesick because you've kind of got a new home with your friends and it just makes going home for the holidays that much better. So it definitely after a while sort of felt nicer to be away from home and to get that independence and like sort of help for in the future when you do move away from home. Excellent. Thank you. So how how about you, Oliver? How did you feel about the first thing of moving away from home? Well the same with me it's quite a way home I, I live about 180 miles away but uh, I just thought it was a bit of a big adventure really because I'd never been away from home for this long and I just wanted to see how I could fare really I was looking forward to it and how Oliver how how did you go about making new friends is the did you do anything in particular did you put yourself out there in any particular way to, to meet new people it was just I made friends with a few of my um, the people in my accommodation and it was when I got to my course as well when I started doing the induction I quickly met people within like the first 10 minutes that I still talk to on a regular basis now just because we all had pretty similar uh, ideas and we all had we we're all very we had a lot in common so we all kind of got along really well. Were there any particular group societies or anything you've joined? There are a few societies I was interested in. I unfortunately just didn't have time to do them. There are quite a few for the film lot, though. There's, uh, I know there's an anime one. There, there was a Harry Potter one at some point, I think. Yeah. Uh, and I think there's a, a fights in film one as well. I'm not sure if that's still around. Yes, there was. I re- yeah, it's the yeah. stage combat or something, wasn't there? Yeah, that was fun. I was going to join that, but unfortunately I just couldn't. Some of the things we're balancing it yeah that's yeah. cool that's cool but yeah there are lots of different groups and societies out there definitely definitely so um moving on to something again that we know um people flag up with this all the time is that that worry about assessment exams essays that dreaded word that everyone always freaks out about um and and quite often with university um people realize um there might be exams but it's not always about exams in the way that previous education is so um Hannah, I'll come to you first. What types of assessments have you done 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 in your subject? subject? A lot of ours are mainly written, sort of like essay work, but we've also had to do um, group pitches for like a false like idea or something. Um, We've had to like create our own documentary um, and like our own sort of film that we would make. So, but a lot of ours is mainly sort of essay and written work. And how do you go about preparing for them, Hannah? Hannah? Um, <laughs> we sort of start somewhat early and we sort of slowly, each lesson sort of helps us build up to each sort of exam. So all the information we get in each lesson sort of helps us. And we do have quite a lot of help from our lecturers on like what our ideas could be, how you want to set it out, how you need to sound when you do it. Like you need to use certain terms, like you can't be very sort of like you have to be functional and you have to be professional so it sort of helps us on each lesson that we do. Excellent thank you and Oliver on to you then so what sort of assessments have you had to do in yours and how do you prepare for them? On our course we're very much the opposite we've never had to write we've had well we've had to do essays I think we've had about two essays three essays maybe but um, majority of it is practical work. So I do film production and screenwriting. So half of my assessment will be me running around with the camera somewhere and the other half will be me writing a character or writing a part of a screenplay. So I get a good lot of variety between written and actual practical, but not much of it is sit down in a quiet room for three hours and just (laughs) type away. Yeah. And how often would you say you probably do assessments? Uh, for our course, we get one big assessment. So it's all it's all co- coursework ours. So we get one big task, one big assessment for a module, and we normally have about three modules per semester. So we'll have about we'll get the big task, and we'll have to hand in that task at the end of the semester. So we've got ages to kind of work towards this idea or whatever we've got to make, 
and it's really good for us to be able to build up momentum and kind of get confident in what we're doing. Excellent, excellent. And Hannah, how often would you say your assessments, your assessments come from? Uh, all of our assessments are always at the end of the semester, so we have quite a lot um, that we have to do. So we don't sort of, they're all pushed right to the end, so we have enough time to do them. So obviously, unlike Oliver's, ours is a lot more written than it is practical. So it gives us enough time because it is quite a big word count on a lot of our assessments. Brilliant. Brilliant, thank you. So that, yeah, I think I think probably some of the key words to take out of that is the kind of the period of time that it that, that those assessments are done over and it's not suddenly thrown upon you or anything. So, yeah, that's really cool. Thanks, guys. Um, so coming on to the kind of support that's on offer, I think another thing that we regularly talk about, um, um, particularly at Chichester, is the, the fantastic wellbeing support that's on offer and the academic support that's on offer. So you can see some of those examples on the, the, the screen behind us. Um, not only support in potentially how to structure an essay, how to write a bibliography, how to reference, but alongside that, there are all those other wellbeing services as well. And we talked briefly about the student money support service. And then we have got some more targeted stuff around uh, counselling and, and mental health as well. Um, Oliver, I know you said that you, you, you'd had experience of using the dyslexia service. Are you, are you happy to share a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. So I'm dyslexic and throughout the rest of my school in life, from secondary school to college to uni, of how paperwork and stuff that needs to be done. And when I came to uni, I had to get it redone because obviously during COVID, everything got a bit muddled and my paperwork just went missing. So um, yeah, I had to get it redone. The university were really helpful with um, instructing me of where to go and how to get it redone and kind of pointing me in the right direction. Brilliant. Do you, do you get any specific support or, or amendments for, for helping you? Um, not at the minute, no. I. Um, I'm currently just in the process of reapplying for okay. it. So, um, but I did get meetings with the support advisor. I think that's who they were, and they just kind of went through the stages of what, oh, what support I'll be getting in lessons from that point on, and it was really helpful just to be able to talk through with someone with it. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. That's really good. So. Coming towards the, the the end of this uh, this webinar, so something that we ask on each of those is is what one thing might you say to someone considering studying film media or screenwriting? So Hannah, I'll come to you first. I'm not trying I'm to not put trying you on to the spot. On the spot. <laughs> um, oh, I don't know. Uh, I would say just enjoy it because it although obviously a lot of it is different. So obviously, film and screenwriting is very different to media um like don't get your hopes up and just sort of enjoy it because you will have fun and although it can be stressful you will have a whole bunch of laughs and you will really enjoy the sort of modules that you want obviously being a media student we get to watch quite a lot of films during our courses because our modules require us to analyze and debate a bunch of films so it is quite fun to be a media student <laughs> And Oliver, what would you say to that question as well? I'd say don't worry too much about, because obviously one of the things I worried about was kind of making friends at uni because I'm very far away. But it, it was literally in the first 10, 15 minutes, I got to know the people on my course. And throughout like the next year and this year now, I've met more people who are on surrounding courses like screen acting students or screenwriting students. So I got to basically just kind of get to know everyone in this kind of big web of creative industry um, courses here at uni. So it was it was really nice. And I don't think you need to worry about making friends because you will find them naturally as soon as you get here. It's a call in really. Excellent. Thank you. That's really nice. I like that. The web of create web of creative subjects. I think that's quite a nice way of putting it. Um, and like like you say, it is although those those concerns and no one's going to tell you, you, you shouldn't have those concerns. But it is when you get here, you very quickly realise that actually a lot of people are in the same boat. A lot of people have the same thoughts. Um, and, and although you will come from different backgrounds, there is a lot of support around you to help. There's a lot of different things that we will do to to hopefully make that process of easing into university really, really kind of uh, much easier, much more comfortable. So 
That brings us to the end of the, um, our webinar today. I just want to say a big thank you to Hannah and Oliver for sharing their experiences there. But if you do have any questions that you would like to 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 send in to us, you can email um, email the team on outreach. So o u t r e a c h at chai c h i dot a c dot uk, um, and we will we will um, endeavour to get those questions answered for you. We can also put you in touch with key departments um, and also specific maybe support services as well. Should you have any of those, um, and as I previously said um we will hear more and more about campus connect as you you get towards um accepting offers and bits and pieces if you if you become one of our offer holders we will also send you information about joining campus connect so you'll be able to start to build those relationships with people on your courses and people in the wider university in the wider university community as well so thanks very much for listening today um, and hopefully we'll see you in september